Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, today's video is not going to be a coding video. Today is just going to be kind of a review slash reaction to a recent uh, YouTube video I watched and uh, kind of found it from uh, my brother who sent me this LinkedIn post by, you already know, Jerry Liu, uh, founder of Llama Index. What a G. Uh, they're starting to actually put out more educational content on their YouTube channel, which I would definitely check out. Uh, because there's only 160 subs and I think this is going to be a great way for you to get up to speed on learning Llama Index. Uh, so for this video, I'm just going to be kind of walking through their notebook and explaining you my thoughts and why I'm kind of excited about at least seeing a more in production, uh, walkthrough of, you know, Llama Index's use cases, because I think you know, we go through the documentation, we see the examples and they're all, you know, pretty simple. Uh, not all of them. Uh, I love some of the tutorials that they actually have on Llama Index, but um, I think it's just nice to see more of this kind of stuff. So what did they do in the video? Just kind of going over what he did. Um, they basically just took a bunch of Discord messages from their Discord, uh, ran it through a script to kind of group them into threads and conversations, and then they show us here how you can use Llama Index's uh, doc, doc store or index refreshing capabilities to actually keep real time data and updates of documents in your vector store. So the way you do that is just at a high level. See, they've got their messages right here that they're dumping in. They have the little script to, con to convert them into groups. And this is actually what I think is one of the key parts right here is actually, you know, creating the initial index and what are they doing here? Uh, let's just zoom in a bit. Um, but yeah, so what you can see here is something that we should always try to do, I think, if, uh, you know, you're trying to, uh, you know, be able to filter through your index more easily and just kind of keep track of everything in a more structured way uh, as they actually prepare the document data themselves with some tweaks that will help them maintain a kind of like tracking system of all the documents created. So what they do is they're actually getting the thread ID and making that the document ID. And now that's going to be important later for refreshing. And I'll explain why when we get to it. Um, but then the rest is, you know, you have the thread text, which is just the, the, the text from the messages and the extra info is the date dot timestamp. I think that's also pretty good to know just to see when the, that was last updated. Um, and then we make the vector store. So they're just making it, you know, for sim simplicity's sake, I think probably just making a simple vector store from the documents. <clears throat> and now here, what they're doing is they're actually just uh, saving it in memory, which uh, they also touch on that a bit is uh, it's, you know, it's important to, you know, not waste money on extra tokens for embedding an index. You don't want to make an, build an index every time uh, you run something. So saving it in memory uh, or in like persistent storage to then load later, I think is actually, uh, you know, something that we should all try to keep in mind. So now this is the cool part. I actually, so I didn't know that you could refresh indexes like this with, this must be new or I'm just stupid. Um, but yeah, they have a refresh function on the index class. So right here, they have their second set of messages and they're doing the whole process over and over grouping it getting the metadata then creating the documents again with the thread id now this is why it's important is because when they refresh what's going to happen is they're going to look for documents of the same id and update them and actually replace them uh when you uh when you when you insert the new documents and so this is kind of like a very cool way uh that they've shown how to use the metadata in vector stores and indexes to actually keep track of information that you know you'll want to update later. So I think that's a very cool idea. You know, you can imagine this being for, um, or setting the metadata to like a user's ID as well. So maybe you're, you have one vector store or one index and you have a bunch of users and it's probably best to, you know, separate that information out across different vector stores as well. But let's say you have one index and you want to put the index 
as or the doc ID as the user's ID. Um, so that every document that is saved or uploaded from a user on your platform uh, has a document ID that is associated with their user ID. So when you pull information from the vector store, you could have a filter on the metadata to actually uh, get the get only relevant information that was uploaded by the user as well. So I think that's another cool trick that uh, I think I did for um, emails or something like that a while ago. But yeah, that is kind of the whole video. But yeah, so uh, key takeaways. Uh, if you didn't know, indexes can refresh themselves uh, like this. Now you do. Um, set metadata when it's appropriate and when possible, if you can, before you load them into a document store uh, or into an index. If you're trying to keep track of certain information or plan to refresh it and update it. And yeah, I guess this is just a quick reaction video on, you know, some cool ways that Llama Index can actually, you know, be useful for, you know, for managing data. And I think that's super cool to see. Again, I will actually post a link to the YouTube channel or to their YouTube channel in the description along with the notebook and all this stuff and the LinkedIn post. I'll, I'll put it all in there just so you guys can see for yourself. But this is just a quick video to kind of bring it to your attention. And I hope you enjoyed. I certainly was excited to see this YouTube video by them. And I plan to subscribe, which I already have, and watch more. So thank you all for watching. Uh, there's no... There's no outro, so uh, goodbye.